Hi, I'm Emmanuel Xavier, and you're watching Out at the Center. Hit, hit, hit. In June of 2008, several individuals who were active in the gay liberation movement of the late 60s and early 70s held a panel at the center to share their experience. It was sponsored by Services and Advocacy for Lesbian, Gay, Bisexual, and Transgender Elders, SAGE. The program called From the Shadows to the Sunlight focused on the first year of the LGBT movement from the Stonewall Riots of 1969 to the Christopher Street Gay Liberation Day March in 1970. To view video playlists from the entire evening, go to gaycenter.org slash out for the link. Now, here are some highlights. I want to take everybody back to Thursday night, June 26, 1969. If there had been an advertisement for a, a gathering of homosexuals such as this, we, we would have been worried about being raided by the police. We lived in the shadows, and on the night of June 27, 1969, we fought back. One of the myths and falsehoods which really has angered me since day one is Oh, gee, they were upset because Judy Garland had died. People in Stonewall were my age group. We didn't give a damn about Judy Garland. It would have been Diana Ross, if anything. I can't underestimate the importance of what went on at the Stonewall when we decided we were no longer going to tolerate the garbage that had been thrown at us all through the years. But to me, the important work got started in the weeks after uh, the riot, when the first organization was formed, GLF. I want to have a discussion of what, what went on that first year that led us from the shadows to that first year when we marched into the sunlight, arm in arm, a proud community, into the Sheep Meadow in Central Park. If I had to characterize GLF in two words, I would say spirit and vision. Uh, in terms of concrete things, it's sort of hard to say because when GLF split into cells, everybody did his or her own thing, and uh, it was sort of anything and everything. Uh, in a sense, it was no more crap. The constant use of consensus at our meetings rather than voting the idea being that we'd have no losers in GLF. We'd have no uh, alienated minorities within our own alienated minority. Sometimes this worked out beautifully, and at other times this did not work out. <laughs> to say the least. Yeah, to say the least. <laughs> that journey to the end of meetings. What would all these meetings in? But somehow or other we meet and meet and we... I spent every night of the week uh, when, when I started, I lived on the Upper East Side. Ultimately, I moved to the village because I was spending every night in the village. I'm going to introduce another little angle here because, of course, I was a woman in the Gay Liberation Front. You see, you're all men fighting and arguing with one another, and what does this have to do with you anyway? And so the women started meeting together separately, and we started to feel like, yes, you know, there was something that was not quite right here, that we needed to uh, sort of have a women's arm of the Gay Liberation Front. GLF literally invented the idea of the gay community. Before that, that idea was just, just not even imagined. At this particular moment in New York City, for it to stand up openly, smiling, running, and saying, we are lesbian, we are gay men, come out, come out, come out and join us, was an act of tremendous courage. Two nights before uh, the first Gay Pride March, there was a gay dance at NYU at Weinstein Hall. About one o'clock in the morning, I left with four friends, and we were walking along 14th Street to the subway, and uh, we were attacked, we were gay bashed. Some guys got out of a car, called us fags, Two came up from behind, two came from in front of us. I was knocked out in the street. My head was in the blood. The blood was rushing down towards the curb. Two days later, I had the joy, though, of marching in the first gay pride march. I had a great big white bandage on my face, and we pushed our friend, uh, Peter Ruffett, whose ankle was broken on a wheelchair the entire length of the march. 
We weren't going to miss it. I don't know if people remember that. First march was from the village up to Central Park to Sheep's Meadow. And my God, there were thousands of us. It was just incredible. I, I'd never seen so many gay people together in my life. This is what GLF started. GLF, GLA, but mostly GLF organized that first, that first gay pride march. What happened during those years, the result of what happened before, it certainly affected me afterwards. I have been involved in a few things, I'm one of the founders of Lambda Legal Defense and Education Fund. In June, I believe, of 1970, founded an organization called Gay Youth, which uh, today I was lucky enough to go downstairs, and Jerry took me to see the latest offspring of Gay Youth, the YES Center here at the Community Center. And I'm a proud papa. <laughs> <laughs> These years in the movement really made a person out of me. They gave me a sense of pride. They gave me a sense of, the, um, of my own possibilities. I discovered that I could speak, that I could lead. We did not know what was going to happen to us uh, when we came, not only came out as gay people, but came out as a radical movement. And I think it was a shock wave that went around the world. And that's all for this excerpt from Out at the Center. If you want to see the full show, check it out on our website at gaycenter.org slash out. Until next time, I'm Emmanuel Xavier. Goodbye. <laughs>